In this video, I'm going to work out one example here showing you how you would go about solving an equation using the rational root theorem. All right, so let's suppose that you had this cubic equation here and you needed to solve it without the use of a, a graphing calculator. <clears throat> so um, I would obviously try factor by grouping first um, to, in order to see if you could set, you know, use that zero product property to, to see if it would work out nicely. Um, if that doesn't work, then you've got to try something else, and the rational root theorem is the place you want to go with that. All right, now with this problem being having a one leading coefficient there, it is going to make this a little bit um, easier because this would be your p's and this would be your q's. And as you recall, that rational root theorem, we got to do plus or minus p over that plus or minus q. So we're going to be putting all of our factors of p over one. So there's not going to be a lot there to test. So uh, basically, I've got to look at my factors of plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4, because it'd be 4, you know, all the factors of 4, and, you know, P over Q. So, you're going to then take a look at these, and really, in all honesty, you're just going to pick one. You're going to pick one and do synthetic division over and over and over until you get one that works. Okay, so um, let's just start. Normally, I will start with the plus or minus 1 or the plus or minus 2. I usually don't start with the larger numbers, uh, but I definitely want to get one that doesn't work to show you what happens, what you have to do when it doesn't work. All right, so let's say you decide you want to try 4 there. So I'm going to do my 4, and then I'm going to do synthetic division. So I'm going to take all those coefficients there, and I'm going to have a 1 and a 5 and an 8 and a 4. I'm going to bring that 1 straight down. 1 times 4 is going to give me a 4. All right, we always add going down. That would be 9. 9 times 4 is 36. Again, adding going down, mm, that's going to be like 44. And then 44 times 4, well, 176, if I'm not mistaken, that one even could be wrong. But regardless, when I add to going down here, I am not going to get a 0, which is what I need. So this doesn't work. Okay, so you try one, it doesn't work, then you try another number for your list, okay, and so forth and so on. So, I don't know, let's try, say, uh, two, okay. Um, so, I could put then, um, let's do a negative two. Let's put a negative two in our box right there. And then do our coefficients, so one, five, eight, and four. Bringing down that one, one times a negative two is a negative two. Add going down, I'm going to get a 3. 3 times negative 2 will give me a negative 6. Add going down, I get a 2. 2 times that negative 2 will give me a negative 4. 4 plus negative 4 gives me a 0. And that is what I need. I need a remainder of 0. Okay, and the thing is, the reason I, fa I wanted to do one that it wasn't going to work out, because not every one of those numbers are going to be a factor. Okay, so you're not always going to get a remainder of zero. So you could ha have to, in theory, try several of them until you find one that comes up with that remainder of zero. But once you do that, then what this does is it takes this four terms and gives you the factored form of that because you're going to use this to come up with a factor because you know that's a factor and you know this is what's left over. All right, now let's come and um, actually write all of this out. So I'm going to start with that original four terms. x to the third plus 5x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals 0. All right, now I'm going to get a factor from here. If negative 2 goes into this with a remainder of 0, I know 2, x plus 2, has to be a factor. So I'm going to write it as x plus 2. All right, now this divides into this four terms with this as our remainder. We're going to take this and write it as, I mean, that's your remainder. This is what's left over. I'm going to write this as a trinomial. So this will be my plane number. This will be my x, and then this will be my x squared. So from here, I can write the trinomial x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right, these two things multiplied together will equal this polynomial of four terms. All right, you could check that by foiling that out and checking. All right, now this term has already been factored. Hopefully, this is going to give you a trinomial that you can factor by hand. 
this one is going to factor into a 2 and a 1, which it is going to work. So this term right here, x plus 2, is going to stay. This trinomial will factor into an x and an x. We've got to use a 2 and a 1 with pluses there. All right, now this four terms I have been able to factor all right, using the rational root theorem, and since the ultimate equation, the ultimate directions was solve that equation, now I can use that zero product property and set every one of these equal to zero. So x plus two equals zero is going to give me an x equals a negative two. Here, setting that equal to zero, x plus one is equal to zero, so x equals negative one. And again, this is going to be the same thing as right there, x plus 2 equals 0, which is going to give me an answer of x equals negative 2. So I'm going to have a solution set of negative 2 and negative 1. So um, just one way of solving a polynomial that's got four terms that you cannot factor it with, use that rational root theorem, use some synthetic division to make it a little bit shorter and you're going to be able to successfully solve those equations without the use of a graphing calculator. Definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks!